A wrestling match happened. Kid Cash and Shark Boy and Slim J yeah. versus the SATs. What a great, great match. Mm-hmm. And Craig, you texted us that it was a half hour. It actually was not a half hour. That counted the uh No, no, no. The, the first half segment. hour of the show. Oh. Yeah, that's true. I, I didn't the find... The first half hour of the sh- Yeah. I mean, the match was absolutely awesome, but I, I didn't exactly yeah. think that the uh, promo segment was all that great. It was fine. Well, it was tolerable. So what we had here was uh, in 2023, we would call a match like this a party match. This was a party match. Just those six small men out there had them do 7,000 moves. About 6,000 of them were awesome. The other 1,000 were often sloppy. I enjoyed Kid Cash dropping Slim J's ass right on a Maximo's face. Just tailbone first. Just smashed his face. No fun. Um, It was very chaotic. Uh, If you're trying to keep track of who's winning or even who's in the same team, good luck. But it certainly wasn't boring. And like it I was say, easy to figure out who's on whose team. The guys all dressed the same were on the same team. Well, there were two Maximos, but Red looked totally different. Well, yeah, but he's always with the Maximos. So uh, after about ten and a half minutes of fun, Red pins Jay with the infrared. A party match. It was awesome. Great match. Everyone looked great. Couldn't believe I was watching Slim Jay. Didn't we just see him like three months I mean, ago? He was 17 here. Was, yeah. I yeah, remember he was on uh, AEW. He's, yeah, he was on AEW a, a couple of months ago, and I do remember uh, at Craig's house learning that I was watching a 17 year old boy wrestling in front of me, and I was paying to watch it, and I was furious. I was just wow. Furious. Well, I hope you apologize because he was great in this match. I never said it was bad. I just said he was 17. Would you rather he worked for Sam- free? <laughs> I don't have an answer to that. I've often said Sammy Guevara has a very punchable face. Slim J also has a very punchable face. <laughs> Backed up with very punchable mannerisms. I yeah. shall fondle my testicles the entire time. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed this match. Yeah. A lot of just constant movement. There was one moment where they're like all six of them kind of standing around because like a pause button was pressed, but then they got going <laughs> again, and I thought it was great. The controller died. Yeah. yeah. Goldilocks interviews the Dups backstage in front of an outhouse. She outright says, if either one of you touch me, I'll kill you. <laughs> well, they didn't touch her. Well, Stan invited her to touch his junk, so she cup-checked him. Just fair. So we had dup comedy. They're doing MTV Cribs, but it's the dups, so it shitters. It took them 20 minutes to get this word out. There's jokes about poo-poo and dookie and caca. Ha, 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 ha. It's really weird where they censor on these these old fight shows well i think there's uh i don't know what's going on but yes there was a, i think it was a brian lawler promo where he said he was sick of this bullshit and they bleeped it and then he immediately said this bullshit is whatever and they didn't bleep any of them after that it's like they only have so many only bleeps. the first one they only have so many bleeps per show yes and they ran out of bleeps and then and, uh yeah. there was a very lewd chant at uh bruce at lenny or bruce or whoever and they actually literally beeped only the... the uh, you suck bleep. Yes. That's what the chant became. But they got oh, it every time. Over and over and over again. Yeah. It's like beep. It was like Morse code. It was, was simulta- promo. <laughs> it was simultaneously annoying and hysterical. <laughs> yeah. So Bruce is doing this promo. They haven't been talking for a week. He's not very good at it. You know what's funny about this thing? is like, I didn't hate this at all. It was it was the old Andy Kaufman deal, yeah. yeah. Which is you know Bruce is out mm-hmm. there. I miss TNA. I'll challenge any of you women in the crowd. And then you know he's going and he's just doing the old school. You heifer, you're so fat. Uh, you need. Well, he said he had some just the most preposterous insults. And then finally, there's this this woman who accepts the challenge, and so <laughs> they send over Borash, and she has to sign like a release or whatever. And she uh, she gets in the ring. She beats this guy's ass, and she's slamming this guy, and she's splashing him, and doing these giant leg drops, and she's just totally beating his ass all over the place. And then finally, he manages to to small package her and pin her, and then he runs for his life. And she's standing there. She ain't even sweating. And Bruce is just like he's half dead. And uh, you know, for what it was, it was like I liked it. I mean, it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, well, like two minutes, and whoever this random woman was, I have no idea who she is or if we will ever see her again, but she was much better than Taylor Vaughn. Yeah, who was this? I don't know. I mean, she was clearly a worker. or She'd been trained. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. I'm not sure who it was. It wasn't like she was great, but she did a great job. But she was so much better than Taylor Vaughn. Well, yeah, yeah. 
Let's see. Uh, Goldilocks asks Jarrett about Brian Lawler. He ignores this. Says he will not rest until he gets truth title. Then he goes into the bathroom to assault Bill Barons. So we can see him in his underwear. Uh, Jarrett bumps into low key, warns him to stay out of his way. Bowed up. Bo- but he called him Kojak, did he not? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Because he's bald. Yeah. And that's a relevant reference here in 2002. <laughs> sure, yeah. Kojak. <laughs> yes. And then uh, Bowed up bumps into a little person and challenges him to the Duck Cup. So we get Bowed up versus T.O. for the Duck Cup. I guess it's better than calling him like Yul Brynner. Wasn't he a famous bald guy way back in the 50s? Didn't you ever play Coljack? <laughs> he may have, actually. Now i got to find out. Okay, you look that up. I don't know. Uh, let me see about this. All right. So it's T.O. versus Bowed Up in the Dup Cup. No, Telly Sabalis. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, all this happened before I was born, and I'm quite old. Yeah, 73, 74, dude. We weren't uh, even alive. No. No, I actually aired till 78. So we were alive for the final seasons of Kojak. <laughs> The Night Stalker. Uh, okay, so uh, Don West is on the house mic. He's trying to call the action and explain the rules and keep score all at the same time. What's Kojak's first name, Benny? Quick. I don't know. Theodopolis. Wow. That's a pretty cool name. I, it must be true because you would not make that up. His nickname was Theo, of course. His nickname was Kojak. Theodopolis Kojak. Hmm. Someone should steal that for NXT. Yes. <laughs> they need a Kojak. That guy'd be over. So they hit each other with weapons. I couldn't believe Don was keeping track of this. They screamed and he was doing a lot. A pretty damn good job off the top of his head. I guess. You can see a big, 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 big giant grown man smashing a little person in the head with but a chair. But see, the problem, the problem, the biggest problem actually was the rules. The rules are not something that you want to recap on a podcast. They say very bad things. And so, you know, poor Don West is out there having to say, ah, oh, if he screams like a. I'm like, man, poor Don. God, from the Home Shopping Network to fucking screaming the rules of the Dup Cup. Jesus. But he did it. And, uh, yeah, this little person, I think he he threw one of the Dups and put his head in the privy. They brought the outhouse out on stage, yeah. which I'm almost positive is not how outhouses actually work. There's a shed over a hole in the ground. But anyway. You can still move the shed. I guess. And, uh, yeah. Be uh, messy, but. Uh, puppet was hiding in there, and the two little guys put the big guy's head in the toilet. This gave Tio enough points to win the Dup Cup. Much better than last so week. So I think that, that Tio is actually the reigning Dup Cup champion, because I think this Correct. is the end of the Dup Cup. Oh, to this day, you mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. Excellent. I, well, I'm pretty sure it's done. He certainly won it here. Let's see if I can find out. The woman's name was Tina Hamilton, and apparently she had Thank no you. other matches on TV. Yeah, I've been looking since... I couldn't find it. Good job, Sean. Thank you. It says here that uh, the Dups became the first champions of the Dup Cup, but lost it to the hardcore midget deal. Which, by the way. Yeah. Tio won when Puppet helped him win. The midget killer. Wasn't Puppet's Puppet gimmick that he wanted to kill all midgets? He wanted no midgets yes. left in the world. His whole goal was yes. to kill midgets. And now he helped the midget win the Dup Cup? Correct. Maybe they were going to feud for it, but then they dropped the Dup Cup. Maybe that's what happened. Hmm. He wanted the little guy to win so that then he could beat him and become the Dup Cup champion. Because he is hardcore. I like this match because Don West You liked it? Great. No, no. I was saying... I love Don West in this match. I see. Because he knew everything about this match, and like he went with it 1,000%. And then Mike Denae no-sold it at the very end. <laughs> Ferraro's like, what do you think about that? Mike Denae's like, well, coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> to the back! <laughs> I'm calling it down Granny's memory lane. Are you oh. reading for your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. This yeah, is new stuff. This is more up to date. You know, I'm I more... see. Okay. This is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just no, said. No, no, okay. no, no. <laughs> the <laughs> New Testament. Everyone let her go. We lived on a farm 10 miles east of Baker. <laughs> more <Yeah>. recent, you say? <laughs> I was going to say, this isn't new. No, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're just going to be quiet. And you, am I out of my mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm finding Vinny. 
Vinny, you're being fined $100. Oh! It was Martels and Hebes. Hebes? Was Martel. <laughs> the Hebes. The Hebes. And the Hebes only had one daughter named Alice. Yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Hebes? The daughter Alice, uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what, <laughs> what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs> You thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? This is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.